were really in turmoil. Uh, members of Congress from both parties were uh, in a period of, of, uh, of uh, disarray, so to speak, that we didn't know what was, had happened. And then when the news came out about the hijackers and the damage they had done, and 3,000 Americans killed, uh, we were all saddened but angry too. And uh, from that was the evolution of the, uh, the bill dealing with voting to knowing that bin Laden uh, was behind 9-11. The um, American government, uh, and I supported the AUMF in 2001, which was an authorization of military force uh, because we knew that bin Laden uh, had been responsible for putting the, the, the plan for the attack. Well, to me, that is a reason that we should have a new debate because there are different groups are evolving all the time around the world. So uh, most of us in both parties would like to have a policy debate on a new AEMF to have the debate and discussion of what you're talking about. Too many times, the lawyers for the administration, whether it be in this case Republican or Democrat, the lawyers always say, well, you have that authority. I don't believe that. I'm not an attorney, but my understanding of the AUMF that we passed in 2001 does not apply to the problems facing the world today. Well, it shouldn't, but it has. Many of us feel in both parties that it's time to have a new debate uh, on an AUMF. We are frustrated because we've not had a policy debate on Afghanistan since 2001. I mean, we're in the 17th year of being in Afghanistan and nothing's changing. Well, I do have Camp Lejeune Marine Base, Cherry Point Marine Air Station, and over 80,000 retired military, with the majority of the 80,000 being Marines. To me, uh, as you've seen when you came in, I have over 500 faces of Marines from my district who have been killed in Afghanistan and Iraq with their names and their ages. And uh, for me personally, as well as the people I represent, I believe in having a strong military. I just think we've had a failed policy for the last 15 years. My genesis uh, of my position now came from my mistake of going into Iraq. Uh, I went to all the briefings. Um, we had kind of Lisa Rice, uh, Don Rumsfeld, Dick Cheney. All would come to the classified briefings with both parties there, it wasn't just one party, both parties, tell us about how bad Saddam Hussein was and, and he had these uh, mobile units where he was making all this poison gas and everything. And uh, I kept listening, but I didn't ask any questions. I blame myself for that. I think that uh, any president, uh, in that case Obama, is making a mistake when they bypass Congress. Uh, Madison said, and I'll paraphrase, it's the legislative branch who has the authority, not the executive branch. We have abdicated our responsibility for too many years.
Well, um, let me give this answer. Uh, when we pass appropriations bills for the military, since I've been in Congress 23 years, I've never seen one defeated. Only if we are attacked, then I think the president w and should take action uh, to reciprocate those who attacked America. But in these situations where you just send certain uh, of our military around different parts of the world, to me, that's a violation of the Constitution. But I blame Congress for that and not the president. It's just like when Mr. Obama went in Libya. He didn't come to Congress. We just wake up one morning and we've taken out Gaddafi and uh, the news says, well, uh, President Obama talked to two or three of the leaders. Well, in the House, we have 435 members. We all represent districts. We also take the oath of office based on our understanding of the Constitution. We have the right and the responsibility to, to debate war. We've introduced a resolution saying that the President of the United States, this could be any President, uh, if they decide to send troops anywhere in the world uh, without the authority of Congress, they can be impeached. There is a provision that if we are attacked on the land of America, then the President has the authority. That we know uh, should happen. But just to send troops into Yemen or to send troops anywhere around the world uh, that you need to come to Congress. If not, then you can and should be a debate on impeachment. Well, uh, we'd, we cannot, uh, we can't get a debate. What happens, and this is a good example, uh, when the appropriations bills come to the floor of the House dealing with our military, uh, the Rules Committee, which is controlled by the Speaker of the House, in this case, the Republican Paul Ryan, they approve the amendments. Well, what happens when you get an amendment, Barbara Lee had one recently, there was a 10-minute debate, five for the amendment and five minutes against the amendment. Good gosh almighty, we've been there 17 years. we spent close to a trillion dollars. 2,400 Americans have died, 20,000 wounded, and all they get is 10 minutes. That's a sad commentary on our Constitution. Well, I put the blame on the Speaker of the House, his name Paul Ryan. In this case, the Speaker has the authority to say the committee's a jurisdiction. We need to have a debate on a new AUMF. The world has changed in a multitude of ways since 2001. Uh, I'm a Republican. I work across the aisle with Jim McGovern, Barbara Lee, and several others. We're trying to get the Speaker of the House, who has the authority, uh, to let us have a debate on a new policy debate on Afghanistan, and he will not authorize it. I have been part of 13 letters uh, from other members of Congress and both parties who've signed letters to Ryan asking for a new debate. To this day in this interview, we've not had a new policy debate on Afghanistan. It was Eisenhower who said when he left office, beware of the military industrial complex. Uh, Congress functions on raising money, Republican and Democrat function on raising money. I'm talking millions of dollars. Uh, I'm afraid that too many times 
money drives the policy. To your question about an AUMF, I think that the money from the military industrial complex that both parties, when they have fundraisers, go to to raise money uh, indirectly, if not directly, has an influence on the leader of the House, Paul Ryan. Sometimes I think Congress is in a coma, uh, especially when it comes to war and to committing our troops around the world. You know, it's one of those things you'd like to just wake them up and say you have a responsibility. It's a con uh, constitutional responsibility to debate and, and discuss and vote for war if you want to go to war. I'm not sure most care. Uh, I can name you, I've already mentioned a figure, uh, probably 30, 35 uh, Democrats and uh, probably 20 uh, Republicans will always vote the same on war issues. That's 55 out of 435. It, it takes the American people. That's why I was so glad to be on your interview. The American people have got to understand that if they want to change a policy, in this case we're talking about war policy uh, or foreign policy, they've got to be involved. You can't trust this system up here. It's not worthy to be trusted.